everyone. During the end of my freshman year, Jeff McClellan, my head of school at the time, pulls me out of class and says, call your mom. I'm thinking, well, what did I do? I'm going in my head, did I get in trouble in class? So I call my mom, I hand him the phone, he immediately walks away. And I'm thinking, okay, this is really bad. He didn't want me to hear the conversation. So he comes back and says, you're going to Columbus tomorrow. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to Columbus tomorrow. I don't know why, but okay. So the next day comes and we're traveling to Columbus and we're talking about the reason why we're going and we're basically just giving our experience and representing the school. So I'm thinking, I'm out of class, I can do this, this is fun, why not? So as the day goes on, we're at Columbus and we're giving our experiences. Just like they said, Jeff comes up to me again and says, I kinda need you to give a speech. I'm thinking, okay, great. Um, what is it about? I kinda need you to write that too. I'm thinking, okay, great. How long do I have? You only got an hour to write it. I'm thinking, okay, great. So I have an hour, have to write the speech and give it. I'm thinking, okay, cool. About how many people do you think there is? Oh, just, just a couple. So I'm thinking, cool, couple people, got an hour, write the speech, present it. So as I present the speech, I'm thinking this is the first time I'm ever talking and uh, I can do this. I, I, I think I'm doing a good job. And come to find out those few people was actually the entire House Senate. <laughs> From that moment, I thought I could take on the world. I just knew I could do anything that they threw my way. But I knew that I couldn't get this in a traditional high school setting. And for most of my educational career, I was like this, very bored, very lectured at, and thinking, okay, I'm just gonna remember this for a test, and uh, I'm just gonna never use this in life. But I decided to be a part of the founding class for MC Squared System High School. And MC Squared is a new school, meaning it hasn't done before. You can't look at the class before you to say, okay, I can do this better than them. You are that foundation for the classes under you. And for me, it often felt like I was a guinea pig. And it was like I was in this big experiment. But it was fun for me because it was unpredictable. It was, I was on the, the breaking edge of this new type of education and I had opportunities that you could never even imagine being in a traditional setting. And as a part of the founding class, we developed these great projects and we were getting all this recognition and we were able to host all these different type of tours and facilitations of things. And I was even had the opportunity to take politicians on tours and uh, host grand openings. And I'm thinking, once again, I can handle anything they throw my way. So as my high school career goes on, uh, this has become my favorite picture. So there's a couple things about this picture that makes it my favorite. Um, one, I have on an awesome jacket that I really like. <laughs> and two, uh, Clearly, I should not at 16 be using a bandsaw by myself with no, no adult around and uh, being alone in an environment like this. But this gave me the self-efficacy that I would have never have gotten unless my teachers and mentors and principal trusted me and had faith in me that I could do it. And with them leaving me as the manager for the lab for the days that I was able to do it and uh, facilitating out what I know in high school and what I, was taught to me was this very powerful feeling that I, I received. And after doing these demos and uh, talking about what I know, just simply given my experiences, I was able to share this knowledge with all types of ages, from little kids and kindergartners all the way up to retired people that have been doing this for years. And it gave me the satisfaction of being able to mentor the next mad geniuses of sciences and uh, working with all different types of kids was very, very, very inspirational for me. And being able to take this 2D concept and able to tell the kids that learning can be fun. It doesn't have to be lectured at. You don't have to fall asleep in class. You don't have to just memorize this stuff, but actually be passionate about what you're learning and see something that theory on the, on the chalkboard, but able to go into a lab like ours and be able to take those theories and apply it to real life applications. And doing this for a while, I showed to my principals and uh, teachers that I am pretty confident in Fab Lab and uh, I really like doing this. So this opportunity has taken me multiple places, including overseas. I got the opportunity to give a presentation at Lima, Peru for MIT's International Fab Lab Convention. So during this conference, 
you have similar machines in your home city, but this network of building, making, and sharing ideas has now expanded because you have these similar machines around the world. And the collaborations that was happening during this conference was unscripted. You couldn't plan it or premeditate the conversations that was being had. And seeing all the different environments that is being applied to this thing we call a fab lab is incredible. And taking the age limit off of something or saying that a kid can't do this at a certain age because they just don't know it is clearly not true because we've shown this through projects and through this conference of collaborating that anything is possible giving the right necessary tools. And through this conference that I was at in Lima, Peru, I was able to gain all these networks and all of these experiences, but I didn't want to just keep it to myself. I wanted to share with my peers back in Cleveland. And that's what I did. The first thing I was designing when I came back home was this tree topper for General Electric Headquarters for Lighting and Appliances, their tree topper, as well as a downtown Cleveland Winterfest tree. And the center of the star represents the globe and how you couldn't put the sphere together unless all the pieces were connected. And then on all the pieces were these mosaic pieces, all different shapes and sizes, showing the connection and collaboration between everybody around the world and how if we continue to build and grow this network, what possibilities will come out as a result. But this is another one of my favorite pictures. Uh, she's a kindergartner and she lives in Parma Heights, Ohio and we were demoing the lab for a week. So the mobile fab lab is composed of lasers, 3D printers, uh, CNC routers, all these different very expensive equipment that we let basically pretty much anyone use apparently. And we have had a wide range of results from it. And in her class, we were working on deciduous trees. So we laser cut a tree and we helped them design their leaves that they also laser cut themselves. She's only five years old and already digital fabricating. That shows you alone that this, this capacity to learn and develop things starts whenever you have the access to the equipment. It's not about just only teachers can do it, but even little, little, little girls and boys can do this as well. And to give teachers the capacity to be reinvigorated by having this access to technology is remarkable. And seeing them involved in something that they're thinking was way over their head or you have to go back to college to learn all this stuff when it's really not true, you just have to sit down and learn. And having the open mind to let a high schooler teach them was really mind blowing to myself because I am in high school myself. I haven't even gotten a degree and yet they're, really, they're willing to listen to me and listen to my story and, and learn from me. And I'm only so young. So with that, what we do in our high school is take these 2D concepts and turn it into the 3D world. But with that as well, we're able to take it to the next step and then have this tangible piece that you can then display out to the class. But for most schools, this is where it stops. The student has done all this work through the weeks and the student's very proud of this piece of paper and it's a sketch. And they're like, I did all of this, this is what I've learned. But just imagine the ideas of taking, okay, let's take it past the step of creation. Let's take it past the step of creating the idea, but actually giving them the tools to bring that idea to life. And that's what I was able to do, and that's what I have been doing to show everyone, all types of ages and all types of students, that you can do this. It's not something that's been done before, but you have the capacity and the, and the drive to do this if you're just shown a few simple steps. Just imagine where we will be if more students and teachers and educators and all types of corporate people were able to be more passionate about technology and have this access to it. Just imagine that five-year-old that I showed you before grown up 20 years later. Who knows, maybe the Star Trek 3D replicator isn't that far off. <laughs> Thank you.